These are this afternoon's top stories. Odyssey Band wins Culturama 41 Road March title. St. Lucia's Police Commissioner's fate to be determined and U.S. to give Myanmar flood aid. Good afternoon and welcome to the ZIZ Midday Newscast. Today is Wednesday, 5th August 2015. I am J.D. Keynes. In national news, it has been a great Culturama season for the Odyssey Band as its hit song, Side Dish, won two major competitions, the groovy segment of the Soka Monarch Contest and the 2015 Road March title. The results for Road March 2015 were announced on Tuesday evening at the Cultural Street Parade. The Odyssey Band secured 320 points. Meantime, the core band secured the first and second runner-up awards for their songs Jammin, which received 280 points, and Rhythm in the Head with 241 points. During an exclusive interview with ZRIZ News, Michael Rose Emmett, who is an international attorney and a citizenship consultant, shared a bit of the advice she has given to Prime Minister the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris and his team to help in enhancing the Citizenship by Investment program. Well, we've provided um, quite a bit of advice um, along, the on, along the way, and I think the government um, have been listening to the important bits, for example, like the due diligence agencies. It's critical, whether it be St. Kitts and Nevis or any other government, that the way they vet um, citizens who are or applicants who are going to become citizens of the country, it needs to be thorough. So we've recommended that um, the government employ or commission another you know two or three due diligence agents from the UK and from the US. Emmett is the group managing director and senior legal advisor for CS Global Partners. On Wednesday, just moments after the police force's mobile command unit disembarked the MVC Hasra, Moto Omnibus H40, which bears the name Western, collided onto the rear of the trailer-sized vehicle. While no one was injured in the accident and no major damages were sustained by the vehicles, a number of curious persons surrounded the scene. The flow of the traffic was temporarily affected on the Bay Road. Regionally, in St. Lucia, sources have revealed that Police Commissioner Vernon France was days in the force are numbered. Officials are reportedly mulling the option of retiring the top cop in the public interest. While the public service minister declined to tackle this topic head on, he concedes that the entire affair is unfortunate. The only letter that I know of the, the um, police commissioner receiving from my ministry is a letter to proceed on leave. That's all I'm aware of. I have not received any letter indicating um, that Mr. Foswa has been asked to do anything other than to proceed on leave or to continue on leave. The Public Service Ministry has come under heavy scrutiny over the supposed mishandling of the police commissioner. Senator Dr. James Fletcher expressed regret with the situation. I think some of it is justifiable. I think um, it's a little bit of an awkward situation in the way in which the leave is being processed, but there are circumstances that make this not a, not a usual situation. So I think in the best of times, it would not have been handled this way. I don't think Mr. Fossa would be sent on leave, and then when he, just before his leave ends, he'd be sent on leave again. But there are peculiar circumstances that I think that have warranted this approach. So I'll tell you that it's not something that I believe we are happy with the way it has happened, but um, it's something that unfortunately is unavoidable in the current circumstances. Acting Police Commissioner Errol Alexander will retain the post for now, following Vernon Francois's extended vacation leave. Francois, who eventually succeeded Osbert Regis in 2012, after deputizing for more than 18 months, has been singled out for what a CARICOM impacts probe alleges was his, quote, willful blindness, end quote, during the ill-fated Operation Restore Confidence in 2010-2011. Rihanni Isidor, HGS News Force. Guyana's police department is currently probing an allegation of fraud occurring at the Ministry of Public Service as its former minister, Jennifer Westford, has been charged with a similar offense. Westford has turned herself in for questioning after being linked to the multi-million dollar fraud. Details in this report. Former Public Service Minister Jennifer Westford turned herself into the police at the CID headquarters this morning as the police widened their investigation into that $127 million fraud uncovered at the Public Service Ministry. Attorneys at law Dexter Todd and UC Anderson are representing Westford and Chief Personal Officer at the Public Service Ministry Margaret Cummins. Both are at the center of the multi-million dollar probe. 
On Monday, Cummins made herself available to the police for questioning in the matter. Both Westford and Cummins dodged the cameras as they hurriedly walked into the building to be questioned by the police. There are reports that the $127 million were transferred into private accounts of individuals on the investigation by the police. Capital News understands that the money was approved for some projects in the regions, but no one seems to know anything about those projects. The SUCS understands that the money was transferred over a three months period. Westford and Cummings are out on bail on attempted larceny forgery charges. That incident stemmed from the alleged transfer of eight government vehicles into the names of private individuals. Reporting for Capital News, Royston Drakes. Internationally, Secretary of State John Kerry says the U.S. is to announce an aid package to help hundreds of thousands hit by floods in Myanmar. Paul Chapman has the details. The lives of more than 210,000 people have been thrown into misery by the widespread flooding in Myanmar. At least 47 people have been killed. Weeks of heavy monsoon rains have prompted the country's government to ask for international help to provide food, shelter and clothing. China's been handing out relief supplies this week. Japan says it'll respond to Myanmar's appeal. Now U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry says American plans are underway to help out too. Our embassy in Yangon is uh, coordinating very closely with the emergency operations center that we helped to put together. And we will soon announce a flood relief aid package uh, as soon as we have worked out with your officials precisely where that ought to be directed. Help can't come soon enough. Some of those forced to flee their homes say they have nothing left. <laughs> We didn't die because we evacuated to the hill as I have a baby. We have nothing left now. I don't even have a bra or a longi. Myanmar's call for international help is in stark contrast to the devastating cyclone of 2008 when the country was ruled by generals who refused any outside assistance. A blast from a homemade mine planted by Kurdish militants in Turkey has killed two soldiers and a guard as lawmakers call for an end to hostilities. Reuters' Jennifer Davis reports. Turkish military have tightened security in southeast Turkey. This after two soldiers and an armed guard were killed in a roadside bomb blast that security officials say was detonated by militants of the outlawed Kurdistan Workers' Party, or PKK. It's the latest in a surge of PKK attacks against the military and reciprocal airstrikes by Turkish jets on PKK targets in northern Iraq. The leader of the pro-Kurdish People's Democratic Party, or HDP, held talks with the main opposition Republican People's Party, after which HDP lawmaker Idris Balukin called for an end to hostilities. Both sides should remove their fingers from triggers. We believe that military operations should stop and PKK should stop fighting. The deaths bring the number of Turkish security forces killed by the PKK since July 20th to at least 19, the worst bloodshed since a ceasefire agreed to in 2013. Taking a look at the weather. In our weather forecast for St. Kitts and Nevis, which is valid until 8 p.m., we hear that according to the St. Kitts and Nevis Met Office, high pressure ridge will continue to maintain fair to partly cloudy skies over the northeast Caribbean. Today will be sunny to partly sunny with a slight chance of brief morning showers. Tonight will be fair to partly cloudy with a slight chance of brief overnight showers. Temperature is recorded at 82 degrees Fahrenheit and seas are slight to moderate with waves of heights up to five feet. This evening, sunset can be expected at 6.42, while sunrise for tomorrow will be at 5.52 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the midday newscast for ZIZ. Join us this evening when we'll have the details to these stories and more in detail. Thanks for joining us. I have been your presenter, J.D. Keynes. Have a great afternoon.